Hello guys, uh, it's Chris again. I'm back with another video. So here's an update. Um, I know that I, I did a short weird update earlier, but I'm gonna do one for real this time. Um, so I've been gone for two weeks, so I haven't worked on the engine at all, and I recently got back so I could start working again and that has been me working on this pretty much um, it's the paint editor I'm just gonna run it before I talk more about it so I have a couple of buttons and the slider and the number that shows the number of the slide and I'm gonna take like yeah I'm gonna take one and then I'm gonna paint something um so as you can see a paint um the pixels are three times as big as they should be uh, or well no three times as big as normal pixels are and that's because uh, if you remember my engine uh, my engine video i painted the maps and that's what i'm doing here i'm going to paint the maps like this and I'm gonna save it to a special fi file format and to make it easier to work with because every pixel is one block so to make it a bit easier to you know position individual blocks at the right position I have made it so you know the pixels are bigger easier to work with alright I'm gonna change the color here to water and this is very tedious. I mean, imagine filling the whole map with water. It's really slow. So I'm gonna size this up to 10. I'm gonna paint it. I think, yeah, there's a real or a small bug with the colors. I'm gonna check that out later. Anyway, uh, as you can see, it, if you notice, sometimes the painting looks really weird. And that's because. Uh, it, this is a this is a couple of images divided into chunks and when you move from one chunk to another it doesn't really capture or it doesn't really paint anything on top of that chunk so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can fix that so it's a chunk problem I'm doing some landscape here and you just notice that this green and this blue is really horrible for the eyes it's a really bad match anyway so here's some landscapes and yeah so sliders buttons stuff now with this editor I have been working on a GUI library as well and uh, right now the library is I have you know I compile it with my project and that's because I haven't really figured out how to create uh, Linux version of DLLs yet so yeah, I'm just doing it like this it's easier so the library contains of a layout manager or a layout class layout object and this object contains all my components right so it contains a container of GUI objects now this goo object is the base object of my uh, of my of all my components. So you know it got virtual functions, so I can overwrite them and still call them, so they do the right thing. I'm gonna show you later. Um, so this object contains you know x y with height, a text, the text, and now and then my button inherits the public GUI so it inherits the public stuff from GUI and then it creates its own versions of uh, its own version for the action and the render um, so if we look here the action here it's a boolean and that's how it is because when an action is has happened I want it to return true and that's because in the layout class later I just loop through 
every single component and then I check, check if um, that component's action has returned true and then if it has I uh, do something here so I can so you can access them from outside this manager this class uh, if you look here I take the I, ta I create a new button give it some uh, some values and then I add it to the layout calling one calling one uh, function what I mean what what this really does is adding a GUI object to my layout but as my button and my slider comp uh, objects inherit from the GUI I can use them in the same way so that's awesome um, so I add it then down here I check if to button layout if the last action that happened uh, was the color and that's just the name of the color button that I add so if I click pretty much if I if I click on that button then do this right and same goes for the tool button layout if I click on the brush size or if I do something with the brush size uh, and that's a slider so if I call if the if I did if I return this action to be true and that's pretty much sliding everything changing values then set the brush size set the brush size to the value of the slider so as you, as th this get action component actually returns a GUI object but I know that this uh, this brush size object that I created is a slider so I can typecast it into a slider pointer instead and get its fat and and therefore and that's how I call the uh, functions that are uh, you know that are only contained within certain component objects All right and then I should actually re uh, reset the last action so that's how we do it now I can do this paint alright so yeah that's my library my Google library I'm working on and it's built around SFML and I really want it to be that way because that makes it really easy to integrate with when you, w you know to use it when you, uh, you do something in SFML so that's really nice um, so yeah I don't know what else to say actually. Um, gonna fix the painting because it can be a bit horrible when it doesn't paint where I want it to paint. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's that's that. Um, whoa, uh, four minutes faster this time. Um, did I miss something? Um, no uh so uh, yeah the 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 GUI library um it can it's contained within its own namespace so it will make that makes it really easy for me to just pick out the GUI library parts the you know the object that's that's for the library I can pick them out create a new project and then put them in and they should work fine because I made sure to only so they only depend on each other and not the actual not the, all the other parts of this engine so that's that's good um, so each layout uh, I have different I have two different layouts and each layout contains its own components and that makes that's because if I play Uh, you can see here when I click on the color two buttons appear and the easiest way I figured out to do this was to create another layout for those buttons and then I just render the whole you know hide the whole layout if I want uh, and this that that this works 
it works really good. Uh, you could, you could, if you're familiar with C sharp, you could think of the layout as a panel or something that contains, that works as a parent component that contains child components. So that's good, and I really, you know, the way I name all my components, and then I'm just able to, you know, get last action and check for what type of action it was or what type of component the action happened on and then I can from there I can I know what to do I know exactly where, where where the last action happened and stuff so that's really good um, yeah so <sighs> I'm gonna come back with an update and probably a couple of hours from now and we'll see what I've done. So thanks for watching and see you later.